What aren't we listening to? Three and a half minutes of silence. Three and a half minutes of statistics. Three and a half minutes of saying so much without speaking a single word. Are you not going to say anything today or just going to use these posters? Philadelphia Eagles safety Malcolm Jenkins addressed the media today for the first time since President Trump canceled the Eagles White House visit. Among the several signs he held, this one, which read, you aren't listening. Jenkins, one of the league's most outspoken activists, refused to answer questions about the controversy. What aren't we listening to? Highlighting the very issues that first inspired some NFL players to take a knee during the national anthem in the first place. Police brutality, prison reform, Jenkins also honoring players who have protested in the name of social justice, calling them true patriots. And when he was finished, is there anything you want to, you want to say on camera? No. That's pretty much it here. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Malcolm. Jenkins simply walked away from the cameras. What I saw Malcolm Jenkins doing in that locker room was saying, the president is not listening to my words. He kept putting up that sign, you're not listening. He's trying to find a way to communicate to the president in a way that words seem, at least for him, to have failed. Today's scene played out as the Eagles returned to the football field just one day after they were supposed to celebrate their first Super Bowl victory in the nation's capital. We couldn't be closer as a team. I mean, you look around this locker room, we, we didn't have the success we had last year by not being tight. Defensive end Chris Long, a critic of President Trump, refused to go to the White House last year when he won the Super Bowl with the Patriots. Today, he wouldn't even say the president's name. The past couple of years, I haven't been interested in going to, uh, to take a photo at the White House with that individual. So at the end of the day, um, it's, it, I can only speak for myself. That's the beautiful thing about America. Everybody has the right to feel however they want to feel. Certainly every, every player in this locker room has a different view on the world, and those fans do too, and I, and I celebrate that right. Monday night, President Trump disinvited the Eagles after it became clear that fewer than 10 players would reportedly show up. Eagles coach Doug Peterson says he had personally been looking forward to going to the White House. We did something last season that was very special. It's a milestone here in the city of Philadelphia, our organization, and uh, I was looking forward to going down and being recognized as world champions. Now, there's an emotional connection to this team based on years of frustration and disappointment. And they want to enjoy all the accoutrements of winning a Super Bowl. And going to the White House is part of that celebration. And that was denied to people here in Philadelphia. And I think people are disappointed. The White House said the Eagles disagree with their president because he insists that they proudly stand for the national anthem. But not a single member of the team ever kneeled for the national anthem last season. Some players, including Malcolm Jenkins, did stand and raise their fists. Previous presidents have seen themselves as sort of neutral celebrators representing the country. So it's their job in their mind, not use it as a political event, but use it as an event to celebrate a victory that that we're all proud to be Americans. Yesterday, Press Secretary Sarah Sanders accused the Eagles of playing politics during questioning from ABC's Jonathan Carl. Is the president aware that not a single player on the Eagles through the entire season knelt for the national anthem? There were 80 members of the Eagles organization that RSVP'd and committed to attend this event uh, as recently as Friday. But why is he acting like this is about the national anthem? Look, if this wasn't a political stunt by the Eagles franchise, then they wouldn't have planned to attend the event and then backed out at the last minute. <laughs> Instead, President Trump held an event he called a celebration of America. Many in the crowd, White House and government employees. The heated debate played out even on the White House lawn, where one man took a knee in protest. We love our country, we respect our flag, and we always proudly stand for the national anthem. We always will stand for the national anthem. I think one of the questions is, how ultimately does the NFL respond to this? I think the NFL is going to have to step up and decide where is their moral compass. And it's not, it cannot be directed and run by Donald Trump. This latest chapter in the battle between the president and the NFL comes just two weeks after the league changed its policy on the national anthem, which says players on the field must stand during the anthem or their teams will be fined. Those who wish to protest without penalty can stay in the locker room until the song is over. Seattle Seahawk Doug Baldwin says the new rule reflects a disconnect between the league and many of its players. I wasn't surprised because of the lack of empathy and the lack of understanding. Um, 
but again, disappointed that there wasn't more progress, that we haven't come further than, than where we have. He's been an outspoken supporter of the athletes who are protesting. What I do for the anthem, I stand with my head bowed in prayer, praying for safety and thankful for the opportunity to go out there and play the sport that I love. The national anthem became an American flashpoint in the country's ongoing reckoning with racial injustice nearly two years ago. When San Francisco 49er Colin Kaepernick first began sitting, then kneeling to protest racial injustice and police brutality in America. In solidarity, more than 200 other NFL players, coaches, and even owners followed suit. Taking a knee or sitting for the anthem became a kind of political Rorschach test, seen as either an act of nonviolent protest. We back them 100%. They're our family, they're my brothers. Or a sign of disrespect. A lot of these players today are young, naive, and stupid. You should stand for the national anthem. President Trump consistently fanning the flames of that divided view. Wouldn't you love to see one of these NFL owners, when somebody disrespects our flag, to say, get that off the field right now, out, he's fired. There ain't no dividing us, you know what I'm saying? I guess we're all son of You know what's ironic about this situation? Just today, the president Pardon somebody after listening to Kim Kardashian's pleas for that pardon. I want to thank President Donald John Trump. Woo! Just a week or so ago, he pardoned Jack Johnson, the famous boxer, after listening to Sylvester Stallone. But when it comes to the NFL players saying they want to talk about social justice causes, he doesn't seem to want to listen. And I think that's what draws the ire of these players. Welcome everyone to the White House. This is not the first time the president has rescinded an invite. Last year, he called off the celebration for the NBA champs, the Golden State Warriors, after star Steph Curry said he didn't want to go. He's up and under, throws it off the backboard. Oh, what a perfect. The 2018 finals are happening now, and basketball's biggest stars have already said the White House shouldn't count on a visit from this year's winner either. I mean, I know no matter who wins this series, no, one's, no one wants to invite anybody, so it won't be Golden State or Cleveland going. I agree with Braun. The way we handled things last year, kind of stayed consistent with that. President Trump did break the tradition of inviting league winners by not reaching out at all to the WNBA champs, the Minnesota Lynx. Top of the team, Maya Moore, she just yeah. He went to D.C. this week anyway to perform a day of service. For the Eagles, it's now back to business. The Super Bowl champions prepping for a new season, saddled with expectations and now controversy. The most important thing going forward, Lindsay, now, to, in my view, is what happens August 9th when they line up to play Pittsburgh in the first preseason game? How many players are on the sideline? How many players go into the locker room during the playing of the national anthem? Two more months until we find out. For Nightline, I'm Lindsay Davis in Philadelphia. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.